In this video, I'm going to share with you some of the common risks and side effects associated with donating plasma, plasmapheresis, apheresis, however you want to refer to it. This video is long overdue. A lot of you have been commenting and requesting a video going over some of the side effects and the risks associated with plasma donation, and so I'm going to do that in this video. Uh, preparing for this video, I did notice there's a lot of material out there. There's a lot of articles and different things to read up on about this. There are definitely um, some common things to be aware of that I'll, that I'll share with you today, but I don't think in the scope of this video I can cover absolutely everything, and so if you have any specific things that I don't cover in this video, please leave a comment and I will do some more research on that particular thing to make a video of in the future. I want to give you guys as much valuable information as I possibly can. And so thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking the videos, and for supporting this channel. It means a lot. And let's, uh, let's dive into it. So one of the first things that I went to was just the different plasma websites themselves for the donation centers. So CSL, I mean, the, these centers make it pretty clear. They're pretty transparent about what can happen. I did notice that on their websites at face value, they don't go into as much depth as they do in the paperwork. They have you review before you actually donate. So what I mean is on the CSL website, and I'll show you this, I'll have it pulled up, but it, it says here are some of the possible short-term side effects that can happen, dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, bruising or discomfort, infection or inflammation at the puncture site. That usually isn't an issue because they disinfect the site before they put in the needle, but with anything that breaks the skin, there's always a small chance for bacteria to be um, introduced into that site. Bruising or discomfort, um, that's never happened to me actually. I've been blessed with large enough veins that I've never had that issue even though I've donated quite a lot. Uh, but bruising or discomfort definitely happens if you have smaller veins, if they miss you on the first stick and have to re-stick or choose um, even a different arm to use. So that's something to be aware of. Another fancy word for it is a hematoma, just some discomfort, bruising, and swelling that can happen there. But those are the general things. When it says dizziness or lightheadedness, um, I have on several occasions been close to passing out. And so for me, that's a slow process where I can feel my body kind of shutting down. And so I can usually warn the people in time so that they can give me an ice pack, they can elevate my feet, give me a power aid, help me out, slow the cycles down on the machine to help my body recover. Um, some people though, it's immediate. They just they just pass out. And so what you'll notice as I continue going over these risks and side effects is this is a very personal thing. There's not just one rule because everybody's different. And so if you're interested in donating plasma, you just need to pay attention to how you are going to react and be affected by each donation. So, and, and I'll go over here too. There's a great website that has a lot of good information that talks about people that are at higher risk for having adverse effects and it says here in fact I'll go right to it the website is called plasma facts and it says the people that are at highest risk um, are the new donors they're actually six times more likely to have an adverse effect over six times more likely and that's just because your body's not used to it you don't know what to expect and so if it's a tolerable first experience even if it wasn't great, it might be worth it to go that second time. One, because plasma centers need you to donate at least twice for them to use your plasma to make medicine. But two, your body could react much better the next time. Obviously, if it's not a good first experience and you don't want to go again, don't. Like, no one expects you to try and push through something that, that makes you feel bad or puts you at risk. So just pay attention to how you feel because it's a very personal experience as far as how you react. Um, with that being said, I know that one thing that people were really curious about is a citrate reaction. So they infuse anticoagulant uh, into your blood as part of it just to keep the blood flowing well. Um, and what's interesting is, is signs of citrate reaction include numbness, tingling, um, feeling vibrations throughout the body, a metallic taste chills, shivering, lightheadedness. So the metallic taste is what caught my eye because I've donated probably over a hundred times at this point. And 
I have noticed that I've gotten a weird taste in my mouth that I can associate with the anticoagulant. Um, but it's never escalated into any of these other side effects that are ha have give you reason to be worried because a citrate reaction is more severe. It's a lot more rare, but it is more severe because left untreated, it can lead to spasm, shock, even a heart attack, cardiac arrest. Um, that's extremely, extremely rare. You could talk to the plasma centers about how often that's happened. They'd probably tell you it's never escalated to that because they, they know how to watch for that. And also, you should be paying attention to how you're feeling. If you're not feeling good, let them know immediately. Um, but going back to the taste in my mouth, at BioLife, when I donated there, there was a phlebotomist that just told me, you know, for most people, or at least in their experience, a lot of people do get a, an interesting taste in their mouth from the anticoagulant, and that's like, and that's normal. I don't know if it was a metallic taste. Um, if you've ever kind of had like blood in your mouth, like gotten a bloody lip or something, you've probably tasted the metallic taste um, of blood. I that's not the taste that I would say that I get, um, but it is it is a distinct feeling that I get, I guess, or taste from the anticoagulant, but again, it's never come with any of those other side effects, so I've never been worried about that. That's just something to throw out there. So it is rare. It is rare, but if you feel any of these things, muscle twitching, shortness of breath, shivering, um, numbness, tingling, that could be a sign that you're having a citrate reaction. As always, it's best to just err on the side of, you know, being cautious and safe and raising your hand, letting them know exactly how you feel, and they will come over and, and make sure everything is going going well, going okay. Um, so as far as long-term risk, because this is what's really interesting is the FDA is who has approved donating twice a week, no more than within, uh, no more than twice in 48 hours, so uh, you do have to have separation there, but the FDA is the ones that have said it's okay for you to donate twice a week. Um, and that, that's a lot. And so people are concerned, well, if I continue doing that for a long period of time, is that going to put me at greater risk for complications down the road? So this is, this is tricky because I have not found, and, and I've done some substantial research, if anybody has found long-term side effects articles, mention them in the comments. I found a couple things here that I want to share with you, but apparently there's still research that needs to be done on that. Um, for me, as somebody that's donated a lot, I don't have any long-term side effects that I can attribute to it. I will say uh, I definitely have a permanent scar from doing it because I've always done the same arm in the same spot. So you could probably avoid that if you go less often or rotate where you um, have the needle inserted. But yeah, I have a scar. It doesn't bo bother me. Some people are worried about that though, so keep that in mind. Um, one thing that CSL right on their website does say that I think is very relevant and important to be aware of, especially with, you know, the epidemic going on, the pandemic going on, um, is that for donors who donate frequently or for an extended amount of time, there is risk for depleting immunoglobin, sorry, immunoglobulin levels, which can lower the ability to fight off infections. So this can affect your immune system. And if you're concerned about you know, COVID and getting that, then, it, or you have family members you don't want to, uh, you know, introduce to that virus, then it's, that's something to be aware of, that you can lower your immune system um, doing this. The other thing people are worried about is um, anemia, you know, lowering your, the iron levels in your blood, um, ju just oh, at lowering protein levels in your plasma, and, and it's true, you know, when you remove plasma and replace it with saline, obviously there's things that need to be replenished. But hydrating well, eating a healthy diet, getting good protein in your diet does replenish that really quickly. Um, they did a study on some horses that, you know, doing intense plasmapheresis like over a short period of time, it did show that those levels in the, these horses dropped, but it wasn't relevant. Um, or it wasn't at least significant to these horses physiologically. It didn't make a significant impact, though there was a drop there. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth. 
it's it might lower those things in you but if you're eating healthy it shouldn't make a difference one more thing I'll share with you well a couple more things I guess I found some really great articles I'm gonna link these below there's a really good PDF here it's called the standard for surveillance of complications related to blood donation this also includes plasma donation they're very similar um, but this basically outlines all of the different common effects and risks that can happen uh, including the citrate reaction and air embolism some of the things that are kind of more scary but much more rare so that'll be a good thing for you to be able to look over um, there's also an old research article I found I think it's from 1970 so it's a little out of date but it talks about the long-term effects of plasmapheresis and right off the bat it says no consistent clinical or laboratory value abnormalities were found during more than six years of plasmapheresis of donors who gave as much as the plasma equivalent of four units of whole blood per week um, so it talks about there are potential hazards including hemoglobin depletion protein depletion iron depletion um, there are some of those hazards but they're they're very minimal and the long-term effects over six years were were not significant um, that's from 1970 so that's a little out of date and again this other article this last article that I'm gonna link below um, says that there is more research that needs to be done and this is the most alarming to me so it says overall this is the conclusion of this research article overall apheresis donations performed on cell separators are safe and have acute reaction rates less than those seen with whole blood donation uh, though the frequency of reactions requiring hospitalization appears to be greater the acute effects of donation are relatively mild and easily treated um, recent evidence suggests however that repeated apheresis donation may produce adverse long-term effects in donors such as bone demineralization and cataract formation. Additional research is needed to ascertain the risks of long-term apheresis donation. So that's kind of freaky. That's, that's a little concerning. Uh, those two things do not sound good, are not good. So if that concerns you, then don't donate plasma at least as often as possible or just be aware of that before you go into it um, I couldn't find additional research on that the article that it linked that talked about those potential complications was like a paid thing I mean I'm, I'm willing to pay to look at that article if you guys want me to um, but I'm sure it's probably not going to tell me too much more besides we have reason to believe that this could be a possible side effect so that's the information that I've gathered so far. Um, oh, one last side note that I will say that I think is important is some people are concerned about the cleanliness um, of the process or the risk of being exposed to other people's blood. And you should know that all of the different components of the plasmapheresis process that actually touch your blood are switched out every single uh, donation as far as I'm aware they have so they give you a brand new needle they, the tubes that they use connected to the needle that connect to the machine brand new um, completely sterile and they have the, even the bowl that they use to centrifuge um, or or the semi permeable membrane depending on which machines your plasma center has all of that is switched out and thrown away and replaced for new sterile unused equipment so that should not be a concern it's virtually impossible for there to be any cross-contamination there um, just as a, a side point but that's that's what I've got for you so if you have any questions if there's anything I haven't covered or explained adequately um, anything that you want me to say in a future video or uh, cover in a future video please leave me a comment I love interacting with you in the comments and I'm learning a lot as I go as I do this and so if this has been helpful please subscribe leave a like on the video um, and yeah give me your give me your comments and your feedback and I will make more videos that will be helpful to you in the future so with that we will see you in the next video